So what actually is the OSI model? In this video, we're going to look at each of the seven layers as well as a real world example. So let's jump in. The Open Systems Interconnected Model is a seven layer conceptual framework that standardizes how data is transmitted over a network. Each layer serves a specific function and they work together to enable communication between systems. Essentially, it helps different systems communicate by breaking down the process into manageable layers, each with specific responsibilities. So let's look at each layer starting from the top. Layer 7 is the application layer, and this is the only layer that directly interacts with user data. It provides protocols and processes that software applications like web browsers and email clients use to communicate. It is important to note that applications themselves aren't part of the application layer. They simply rely on it to interpret and display data meaningfully for the user. Application layer protocols include HTTP, SMTP for email, as well as FTP. Next is layer six, which is the presentation layer, which ensures data is in a usable format and handles data encryption, compression, and translation. It is also responsible for translating data between the application and network format, ensuring compatibility across systems. It's also important to note that in modern internet communication, encryption like TLS is often handled at the transport layer instead. Next, we have layer five, which is the session layer. And the session layer is responsible for establishing, maintaining, and terminating the sessions between two devices. It will keep the connection alive as long as necessary, and it's also responsible for synchronizing data exchange and manages session checkpoints to recover from interruptions. Layer four is the transport layer, and it handles end-to-end -end communication between devices. It receives data from the session layer, divides it into segments, and then passes these segments onto layer three. Key protocols include TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, which is reliable and ensures all packets are received and in order. So think of something like email. And then we have UDP, User Datagram Protocol, which is faster, but less reliable and is used in applications like live video streaming, where each packet isn't as important. And if you want more details on those, I've linked a video in the description. Next is layer three, the network layer, and this handles logical addressing and routing of data. It determines the best path for data to travel across networks. And at this layer, the segments are broken down into packets and assigned IP addresses, so both the source and destination IP addresses. A key protocol is IP, Internet Protocol, which assigns IP addresses and routes packets. Next, we have the data link layer, which ensures reliable data transfer across the physical network by managing frame transmission and MAC addresses, MAC standing for Media Access Control. It encapsulates packets into frames, which include MAC addresses for local network communication, for example, between your computer and your router. And finally, we have the layer one, which is the physical layer. So packets are converted into electrical signals, light impulses for fiber optic or radio waves for Wi-Fi for transmission. And it also defines hardware specifications, including voltage levels, cable types, and transmission rates. Okay, and so now what we're gonna do is look at the OSI model by stepping down through the layers of a real world example of sending an email. At the application layer, you can write an email and then hit send and Gmail will use SMTP to prepare the email for transfer. The email will then be optionally compressed and encrypted using SSL or TLS for secure transmission at the presentation layer. Though again, in modern internet protocols, encryption is often handled at the boundary between the application and transport layers. The session layer will establish a session between your computer and Gmail's server, allowing continuous communication until the email is fully sent. At the transport layer, TCP segments the email into smaller chunks called segments, numbers them, and ensures they are delivered reliably and in the correct order. Those segments are then broken down into packets at the network layer. Each packet is assigned the source and destination IP addresses, which routers will then use these addresses to determine the best path to the recipient's mail server. The data link layer will then encapsulate the packets into frames, which include MAC addresses for local network communication. And then finally, the data is transmitted as electrical signals over Ethernet cable or as radio waves if using Wi-Fi. This layer handles the physical transmission of raw bits across the network. And so once the email reaches the recipient's mail server, the data flows back up through the OSI layers on the recipient's device, starting from the physical layer and up to the application layer, where the email is reassembled and displayed in their inbox. So to recap, the OSI model is a conceptual framework that standardizes how data is transmitted over a network. However, the modern internet does not strictly follow the OSI model. However, understanding the general flow of data through these layers provides a solid foundation for network communication and is well worth understanding. I hope this made it clear what the OSI model is all about. If you got any value out of it, like and subscribe and share with a friend. It helps the channel out a lot. And also, if you want to stay up to date with the most technical interview questions, make sure to check out techprep.app and I will see you in the next one.